Yeah, let me talk about Life's Handicap by Rudyard Kipling, a collection of short stories published in 1891. Uh, a collection that uh, is all about British India, which is, um, you know, is Kipling's people. He was born in India from, with, from uh, British Indian parents in 1865 um and these this talks about this is this is the colonial the colonial perspective on that india uh the story many most of the stories focus on um british indians uh whether as governors or uh kind of civil servants or uh, uh, quite a few stories of uh, the, the the army grunts who kept the British boot on India. Um, them uh, and definitely portrays the Indian subjects as mostly as kind of just childlike, capricious, violent, silly creatures who need the consistent, firm, rational hand of the British to to govern them it's for their own good not um, a you know British colonial force basically set there to uh, make sure that the exploitation and and um, and, and subjugation of uh, of Indians the Indian peoples wasn't uh, accomplished um, yeah it was a tough tough book to get through because of that very consistent, I mean, it really is, you know, I, I often note, note that of like someone just talking about like, you know, old movies. If you don't see any people of color in old movies, you should just assume that all the white characters are fucking racist because the only time when, you know, people of color, whether it's black or Asian or whatever, show up, they're treated like utter shit by the white characters. As a matter of course, they don't even think about it. And yeah, this is a story where, of course, there is a ton of contact with those people. The very reason for the existence of these British Indian people here is because of the silly, um, childlike, um, inferior, deeply inferior peoples from Kipling's point of view. I mean, that, that kind of comes through story after story. And, you know, it's not even only that... Um, he has a series of stories of the British grunts, but uh, they, the, the main one of those is an Irish guy who, of course, is a heavy drinker and is, is a liar and a robber and uh, but the salt of the earth a man. I'm doing my, my host horrible, cliched Irish accent because, you know, uh, it's, it's definitely like it's the childlike Irish who benefit from uh, British, British rule of Ireland. Uh, which is uh, one of the other things that uh, Kipling was very much for, is that the British should definitely keep the boot on the Irish and rule them, uh, that the Irish weren't capable of ruling themselves. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not only people of the different skin tone, but also, yes, the Irish. Um, there's definitely a lot of, there's some really dark stories here about uh, Germans. There's one story where it's like, oh, the German guy, the German narrator is... He's fucking evil. He is just such a fucking evil thing. He's he tells the story of this guy who had this. Um, I can't remember if it was a gorilla or a orangutan, but it's like the, his friend had a had this this ape that loved him, and he made the mistake of getting a wife, and the orang the the, the the ape murdered murdered uh, the um, the wife you know, ripped her limb from limb, and, uh, yeah, it's just, like, there's, there's definitely, like, a, and there's another story where there's a German guest at a regiment, uh, I think it's German, or is it Russian, one of the, oh, I think it might be Russian, and it turns out that, like, in the last war, like, 20 years ago, uh, a British fellow had actually been spirited away and kept as a prisoner, a legal prisoner of war all that time, and just like how there's a whole kind of just xenophobic 
z really nasty xenophobic like this is the hun and this is the evil fucking russian which um just leaves you with a kind of really it's it's that racialized thing that is just gr really gross uh there's a story of uh some jewish characters in here which doesn't escape the usual fucking omnipresent uh, anti-semitism that i'm finding in works um of all works of this time in britain in the united states uh in, in france everywhere is just like fucking omnipresent horrendous anti-semitism i haven't even gotten to like to the german that yet it's just like it's just brutal it is just so brutal um uh, yeah, this has all been, like, I'm, I'm reading Kipling at the moment because it's a part of my 1901 project, which is reading works from, like, 1890 to, uh, 1910. And, uh, I mean, Kipling was huge. I mean, he, he wins the Nobel Prize in, I think, like, 1906 at 41. He is the youngest recipient of the Nobel Prize. And, uh, you know... There were people at the time who was like, why the hell are we giving it to this guy, this proponent of hate and intolerance? <laughs> um, so there was, but that was like a minority. I think that was like basically a minority voice of the time. Um, uh, yeah, I have to read out that essay of like someone decrying that, like, why? Why him? Uh, I mean, he is a really good writer, uh, but he is boys. He a voice of the empire. And I mean, I do have to think about it as a Canadian because the British didn't last in India. The British uh, came to North America and they succeeded. I mean, part of it broke, broke off and was the United States and the other part of it stayed with them for a long, long time as Canada. And um, there weren't the people uh, in, in North America, partly because of all the disease and stuff that... that, that they were more prey, prey, prey to our old world diseases than when the British went, went to places like India and died, died very quickly. A lot of them died. Um, so it, it, the balance went differently. And so India was allowed to kind of emerge, become India again. But Canada, United States, Mexico, they didn't. They didn't. I mean, they're still, they're very much still native peoples here, but it's like the, uh, the change wrought is, I mean, omnipresent now. Uh, so Kipling, Kipling is representative of, of a colonial thing where within, you know, kind of like by the forties, you know, there's real fermentation and they do get thrown off. Um, you know, they, they ha they get, India gains its freedom again. Um, but that's never happened here in Canada. And I am, you know, I think of the British, the British Indian, well, I am the, you know, I'm just literal descendant of, of my, my father and mother, both from Britain, Scotland and England, uh, and came to Canada um, in the 1960s, so kind of well after the whole colonial project um, had had foreclosed, um, and we're still struggling with that now. Exactly how to come to terms with our history of yeah, we're the successful one, we're the successful well, in a sense, or we're the we're the worst dream uh, come true for this continent, um, depending on you know what side you're looking at it from, um, or just a very ambivalent side on this case. So yeah, it's. It was it was a really tough book to get through because it was just story after story after story. And it's like, I think with Kipling, I will go on and I will read The Jungle Books. I will read Kim. But I, I, I first thought I was going to read a whole bunch of his short stories because he has a whole bunch of collections. But I'm like, it was a slog to get through that one. It was a real slog. And uh, yeah, I think I might just... British India is like fucking brutal to read to read about through Kipling's eyes. Really brutal. Uh, I can't say it was enjoyable, even though I admit he's really he is a good writer. Um, his the, the stories that were more genre stories like a ghost story, 
there's like one there's one in there that's kind of ghost story-ish or, or kind of mystical um or easy to take which is like hmm, that's interesting that uh that that genre kind of i i can take that maybe because of so much of our of our genre fiction is based in um a lot of colonial fiction you know you think about indiana jones adventure stories or uh you know, you know, it's John Carter of Mars is also kind of colonial, got the kind of with the natives sort of things. And uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. All right. So yeah, that is Life's Handicapped. I just wanted to get that out there. I don't know if I'm ever going to release this as a video, but I've been, it's been bugging me for a while. And um, I want to just, I just wanted to talk about it. All right. I'll leave it there. More videos later.